Hello there, welcome back to Daniel Rosal on YouTube. This is Daniel Rosal here bringing you another video today from uh, Jerusalem in Israel. It is a Sunday, which is the start of the week here in Israel because Israel, like many countries in the Middle East, is on a Sunday to Thursday work week rather than a Monday to Friday one. And the question is, do you ever fully get used to it. Honestly, not so far for me. I've been here for eight years. It's still an adaptation. It does get a little bit easier uh, with time. But I wanted to talk today because this YouTube channel is hopefully increasingly focused on uh, stuff to do with Israel, my life in Israel, living in Israel, and also any kind of advice that I can pass on or info that might be useful to people who are earlier than me in their uh, journey in Israel, whether you're, uh, you've are you moved to Israel for indefinitely, you've made Aliyah, or you're just looking to move to Israel uh, temporarily for whatever reason you're here or you're thinking about being in Israel. One of the um, things you might have to deal with or you will have to deal with is the healthcare system. And healthcare, of course, is something very, very fundamental, particularly if you have health conditions. And therefore, I think it would, be, I thought today for no real reason that it would be a uh, worthwhile topic to cover here on this uh, channel. Now, I've talked before about a couple of aspects of healthcare in Israel, like, you know, sort of stuff like, well, how do you find a doctor? And, uh, you know, if you're looking for a specialist, how might you do that? Those videos might show up in uh, on YouTube under my name, but that's that's actually quite specific to what kind of healthcare that you have, uh, whether what type of health maintenance fund you have, or if you're going private, etc. So what I thought I would do differently uh, in today's video is just zoom out a little bit and talk about how healthcare works in Israel more generally. Before I talk about that, I want to say that I think that healthcare is one of the best things, I was going to say the best things about living in Israel, but I don't think for most people, healthcare can be considered an advantage. Perhaps a better way to rephrase that is I think that Israel does healthcare really, really well. Israel is frequently commended for having one of the best and most advanced healthcare systems in the world. And I would say having accessed it for various reasons, both for physical health conditions and actually also for a mental health condition. And I'll talk very openly in this video about uh, dealing with depression because it's a very common mood disorder, something I've suffered from, uh, struggled with and accessing uh, mental health care services in Israel because that's definitely and of course part of the a picture of healthcare. I also have asthma, so I can offer both a physical health condition and a mental health condition to talk about um, in this video. But I think generally Israel does it really well. Now, of course, uh, you know, some people are going to say I had a lousy experience with a certain doctor, or um, in general, I don't think healthcare in Israel is that good. I'm sure there will be dissenting views out there. But from my perspective, um, having moved to Israel from Ireland, I would regard the healthcare system here as a lot better. There are definitely things that I think Ireland does better, but in this particular uh, aspect of life, healthcare, I definitely give the prize to Israel. I think it does healthcare really, really well. So the fundamental uh, mechanism for delivering healthcare in Israel is something called the health maintenance organization. Now, if I'm not mistaken, Israel actually sort of got this model from uh, from Germany. Now, the uh, acronym in English for health maintenance organization is, of course, H. Um, oh, the acronym in uh, Hebrew is uh, Kupat Cholim, and the best translation for Kupat Cholim is the health fund. So Israel has basically universal basic health care. Every citizen of Israel needs to be signed up to one of the Kupot Cholim. Kupot Cholim is Kupat Cholim in the plural, and there are four different uh, Kupat Cholim. There are, let's see if I can remember them, Klalit, Maccabi, Meyuchedet, and Leumit. I think it was easier to say it uh, quickly like that before I forget. I've heard there was originally just one Kupat called Klalit, and then the Israeli government mandated that there would be some 
competition in the marketplace. You have four different health maintenance organizations or HMOs and everyone has to be a member of one. So when you're moving to Israel, whether when you do the bureaucracy at the airport, one of the questions you're going to be asked is which Kupat Cholim you want to join. Now my advice in this respect is to do your homework before someone hands you a piece of paperwork at the airport and you're kind of put on the spot. Now, what are the, what are the differences between Klalit, Maccabi, Meyuchadet and Leomit? Well, Klalit, generally speaking, is the biggest health fund, right? Klalit in English translates as general. Uh, it has the widest coverage network in terms of clinics and specialists throughout the country. So it's kind of the general one. Maccabi has a really good reputation in terms of having good English speaking doctors. So if you ask English speakers, whether you're in Jerusalem or Tel Aviv or somewhere else entirely in the country, Maccabi will be a common recommendation. Personally, I've had Maccabi. I was with Clalit for the first year and then I switched to Maccabi and I've been happier with Maccabi. Now, just to quickly talk about switching between uh, Kupot Cholim, healthcare providers. Um, it's pretty easy. You can do it through, generally people don't go hopping. I mean, there's only four to choose from, uh, but basically there are four transfer dates in the year and processing the transfer is pretty easy and your electronic medical record will be transferred from one Kupa to the other. So when I moved from Klalit to Maccabi, my blood tests, etc., that I did with Klalit were moved over to Maccabi. So we were halfway through talking about the uh, healthcare funds in Israel uh, when I uh, got got a little bit sidetracked. So you have Klalit, you have Maccabi, Meocherit, I don't know a lot about. If people have feelings about it, uh, put those in the comments. Leomit, I do know is considered the smallest of the four HMOs, but it has the strongest presence over the uh, green line, so in Yehuda and Shomron. In terms of which healthcare fund to choose from, should that be your guiding criteria? A lot of people will choose their Kupat Cholim, their HMO, based upon specific doctors or the coverage it has in a specific city. So Maccabi is very popular in Jerusalem, but people living in other parts of the country, I don't know, maybe in Elat or Matula, if you're very far uh, from other places, you might opt for a different health fund because they have a clinic in your area, a very good clinic, or they have, you know, a great rheumatologist and uh, your health problem is in the realm of rheumatology or in asthma. So you need a great pulmonologist or hopefully you're healthy. But if you have specific conditions, uh, that's often a guiding criteria for why people will choose one of the four Kupot Cholim over the other. But as I said, my recommendation would be to do your homework in advance so that when you show up at the airport or wherever you're doing your Aliyah bureaucracy, ask around, social networks are great, ask on Facebook, ask your friends again, because it can be location specific. So if you have a specific condition and you're in a specific location, you're saying, you know, you could ask in a Facebook group, well, I have, uh, let's just take a, let's take rheumatoid arthritis, right? You could post in a Facebook group, I have rheumatoid arthritis and I'm looking at moving to uh, this neighborhood in South Jerusalem, which Kupa has the best coverage and you might get recommendations for different Kupos with different doctors because doctors will work with different Kupot Cholim. In addition to the system of Kupot Cholim, the system of uh, Kupot Cholim of HMOs is the basic mandatory healthcare in Israel. It's the public healthcare system. Your average Kupot Cholim will operate doctor's clinics. They'll operate specialist clinics. Some of them will operate hospitals, imaging services like x-rays and CT scans and MRIs, etc. So within the framework of your HMO, you have basically, hopefully, enough to get your healthcare needs met. I can only speak for Maccabi. They actually have their own pharmacy network as well. So you can go to a Maccabi clinic, visit a doctor, and then walk next door to the Maccabi pharmacy and get your prescription filled. Maccabi also have a dental service and they even have a uh, branch for offering complementary or alternative healthcare, something called Maccabi, uh, Maccabi Teva. So really under some of the healthcare funds offer the full panoply of services, but generally uh, you'll be able to get your basic healthcare needs met. In addition to sort of this, this public healthcare system, you do have private health care in Israel as well. You have uh, private uh, health insurance providers. You have 
private doctors who don't work through the Kopat Cholim, or some of them also work through the Kopat Cholim. Um, and if you're not getting satisfaction through a family doctor or you need to see a specialist, uh, you're also able to access private medicine in Israel. One service I have pers personal familiarity with is something called Sharap. Sharap stands for Shirut Rufui Prati, which means the private medical service. It's something that exists at Hadassah in Karim Hospital in Israel. And for a not enormous fee, you can see a specialist medical provider. Now, the fee is going to depend on the doctor. But for, for instance, I went to see a gastroenterologist through Sharap and I was able to see someone for 350 shackles per visit, which is about 100 dollars thereabouts so for seeing a you know medical specialist at a teaching hospital i think that's still considered pretty good value and that was totally voluntary i was able to access a gastro uh, this was after i had gallbladder surgery and i was having a lot of problems so i firstly accessed my my, my kupat cholim system but i didn't really get to the uh, bottom of the problem or get the problem so solved so i voluntarily paid $100 uh, to see someone a couple of times in Hadassah in Karim. So that is uh, private healthcare as well. And there's a whole world of private healthcare beyond Sharap uh, that I'm not familiar with. So I'm not going to talk about stuff that I don't know. Now, I mentioned that I would uh, talk about mental healthcare in Israel as well. I mentioned that I have asthma. Uh, so I've experienced going to physical doctors, if you will, pulmonologists, allergists, getting my prescription medications, which by the way, are pretty cheap in Israel as it goes. Israel, Misrad uh, Habriut, which is Israel's healthcare ministry, has something called Sal Habriut, which means the health basket. And that means that the government will subsidize a percentage of medication. So when I go to buy my asthma inhaler at the pharmacy, my kupa is charging me a percentage of uh, the medication cost, right? It's covered in Salah Briut. So I'm paying a sub, that was the word I was looking for. I'm paying a subsidized rate for my asthma inhaler. It comes out to like something like $10 per month. So my monthly fees for accessing healthcare in Israel personally are, I have to pay my Betuach Leomi, my social security contributions. That gives me access to a Kupat Cholim among other national services. I pay a monthly fee to my Kupat Cholim to remain a member that cost me something like 20 or 30 dollars it's relatively nominal and for that money i can see doctors and medical specialists almost for free if you haven't seen a medical specialist uh, in a quarter of the year sometimes there is a small charge like five dollars um, but it also allows me to get my prescription medications at the subsidized costs so long as the pharmacies work through my with my Kupat Cholim. The one I use is Super Farm, which is Israel's largest national pharmacy chain. They work with Maccabi, so I can either uh, actually no, I have to present my Maccabi card and they'll be able to call up my prescriptions on my Maccabi card for my asthma inhaler and I'll be able to get it at a discounted copay. I can also walk into Maccabi Farm and get it for roughly the same price. Because this is socialized medicine, not all the medications are going to be subsidized, right? So if you're looking for a rare medication or a second or third line medication for whatever health condition you might be uh, struggling with, you might find that the copay doesn't exist and the medicines are pretty expensive. But in my experience, I haven't really had that so far. I said I was going to talk about mental health care as well because it's such an important uh, topic. And as I mentioned, this is also something I can speak to from uh, from personal experience dealing with depression. So, okay, um, in mental health care, there's obviously sort of two big chunks to that world. You have the world of psychiatry, which are mental uh, doctors, medical doctors, which specialize in treating mental health problems. And you have the world of uh, psychology. Now, the last time I checked, it was very difficult to find therapy talk therapy through my Kupat Cholim, which is Maccabi. I'm not, it, now, it does exist. Subsidized talk therapy, psychotherapy exists through the, through, through the Kupa. However, the process of trying to access it, particularly in English, was very non-user friendly and I ended up giving up on the process. And I did a little bit of talk therapy, 
but I paid uh, privately and yes, that was expensive. So I would say the world of physical healthcare in Israel through the Kupat Cholim is better delivered and better organized than the world of mental health care. Now, when it comes to psychiatrists, now for a common mood disorder, such as depression or anxiety, or ADHD, family doctors can treat these conditions in Israel. So currently, um, I'm working with a family doctor to, uh, you know, to stay on a medication for depression. And if that medication were to stop working or I had problems with side effects, I probably wouldn't need to go beyond my family doctor. I don't know if this is a case in other countries, but in Israel, there is a shortage of psychiatrists. So for commonplace or, you know, pretty regular mental health care problems like depression and anxiety, family doctors are happy to manage the conditions generally. Now, of course, if you're not happy with the level of treatment you're receiving from your family doctor, you can ask to be referred to a psychiatrist or you can pay to see a psychiatrist. And just like in the other realms of healthcare in Israel, both public and private options exist. The catch with uh, public psychiatry in Israel is that depending on where you are in the country, there can be a real shortage of psychiatrists and the wait times can be very long. So if you need a psychiatrist in Jerusalem through Maccabi, there is currently something like four options and the wait time, the last time I looked for an appointment, was something like four or five months. So if you're dealing with something like really bad depression, and hopefully if you have depression or anxiety, it's, uh, you know, it's well controlled. But if you've reached some kind of a mental health care crisis, clearly uh, having a doctor you can see in four months is not going to be useful. So you might need to opt for a uh, private psychiatry which exists here as well now the healthcare systems are kind of a little bit joined up so if you were to see let's say a private psychiatrist they can write you a prescription you can give that to your uh, family doctor in the healthcare fund and they can create that prescription through the uh, Kupat Cholim system, which will allow you to access that medication at those discounted prices. Now you can get private prescriptions filled in pharmacies, but uh, you're gonna be paying uh, more for the same drug. Uh, I did that recently with a drug called Trintelix, which is a um, antidepressant, and the, and the price that I paid privately versus when I got it put into the Maccabi system, it was like 100 shackles versus 30 shackles, $20 versus $6. So. Either way, it's pretty subsidized, but uh, if you want to get your medications as cheaply as possible and get healthcare as cheaply as possible, your best bet is to work through the, uh, through the public system. Final topic of conversation uh, for today's talk about uh, healthcare in Israel is regarding urgent care. So there is, of course, um, a system of hospitals in Israel and there are emergency rooms uh, in those hospitals. There's also something called Terum, which is really, really a fantastic sort of in-between that it's very, very worth knowing about. Wherever you are in Israel, it's spelled in English T-E-R-E-M. They have a website listing their national branches. And basically this is sort of a intermediate care clinic. I believe it's called urgent care as opposed to emergency care. So uh, generally often the Kupat Cholim will operate according to the standard Israeli work week, which as I mentioned is a Sunday to Thursday work week. But of course medical problems can happen 24 seven. So you might find that you're cooking, uh, preparing food on a Friday and you get yourself a nasty cut on the hand. So clearly making an appointment with your doctor on Sunday is not going to be useful to you. So there is a network of, uh, of emergency rooms in Israel, but for most stuff like that, for, you know, minor, relatively minor stuff, even I've gone to Terum for uh, nebulization for asthma. Uh, those are the first uh, ports of calls uh, to go to and uh, they work with the insurance provider. So it's important to bring your card. When you sign up for your uh, Kupat Cholim, you will get a card. So keep that in your wallet. And if you need to access a uh, term, they do a uh, fantastic service for not a huge amount of money. It's uh, again, subsidized and they'll operate on uh, Shabbat when the conventional healthcare networks are generally closed, which is of course uh, problematic if you have something urgent that happens on Shabbat. And of course there is a ambulance network in Israel as well for emergencies. That's pretty much uh, as much as I can sort of think to get in, out of my brain at the moment regarding how healthcare works in Israel. It's a very good system and it works really, really strongly through electronic medical records. For instance, I can log into my Maccabi website right now with my username and password. I can send messages to my doctor up to Maccabi's limit is four times per quarter. So you can't 
uh, you know, sort of go crazy on it, which is, I think, very sensible. Uh, but if I need something like a prescription refilled or I need to write a message to my doctor saying, I don't know, I need uh, the higher dose of an inhaler, I can do that all digitally, get the response digitally, I can book appointments digitally, and I can cancel appointments digitally all through the website or through a smartphone app. There is also a call center, so if you prefer, if you're uh, away from technology or you don't have access to a uh, computer yet and you need to do it all through human agent, you can do that as well, but I would definitely advise whatever Kupatrolim you join to download their official application and familiarize yourself with the website because that's generally the most efficient way uh, to get uh, healthcare in Israel is by doing stuff yourself, self-service, and uh, you may need to learn a few words of Hebrew in order to uh, navigate the website. Um, I don't know if the other Kupat Cholim, uh, Kupot Cholim have translated versions. I know Maccabi really sort of doesn't, so you do need some basic Hebrew in order to navigate it. Uh, but you can use, I also recommend, and just recently found out that a friend of mine didn't know this existed, so not everyone knows, there is a Chrome extension called Google Translate, which if you use the Google Chrome web browser, you can add. It's also there for Firefox. Um, and using that, you can select certain words in Hebrew and have those uh, translated to English or your native language. So little technological tools like, like this can really, really help. Uh, to make the process of accessing healthcare in Israel easier. I hope this uh, video was useful. If you are looking at moving to Israel uh, on Aliyah or you're already here and you're trying to understand how the healthcare system works, the main uh, points I would reiterate is the Kupot, the Kupat Cholim, the Kupot Cholim collectively provide your basic healthcare cover in Israel. And I would advise personally, if you're moving to Israel, you haven't got here yet, or you haven't finalized your Aliyah process yet, asking around if you have a specific healthcare condition that's also relevant, as well as where you're thinking about living because the quality of the different Kupot Cholim uh, can be quite individualized. And I also really recommend downloading the app of your Kupat Cholim and trying to access the services digitally as much as possible because from my perspective, that's where the Israeli healthcare system really, really shines. It's all digital, it's all joined up, and uh, that generally makes getting uh, the healthcare you require easier and more effective. Thank you for watching uh, today's video. And if you want to get more videos from me about stuff related to living in Israel, do consider subscribing to this YouTube channel. Thank you for watching this video.